Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. And it's like, it's just good to be back home, you know? Like, there's something about going away on holiday, because we were away on holiday, if you didn't know that. Yeah, we were away for two weeks. Um, there's something about coming home that, like, always feels nice. You know what I mean? It's like, you're excited to, like, be away, but you're also kind of excited to sleep in your own bed sometimes. But it's like, kind of how I feel about, you know, coming back to our church. You know, Beth and I, we love our church, and we love each and every one of you. And, you know, we had a, a really, really good time away. Um, we had a great time just... Uh, uh, resting and you're just even reconnecting as a family and it was absolutely incredible. We had a, this great time together and we also were able to connect uh, with some of our Victory family across kind of Western Canada uh, uh, throughout this this time away. And so uh, we ended up at Legacy Conference, which was in Calgary at Royal Oak Victory Church. We have a picture of 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 it. Yeah, right there. So this was Legacy Conference uh, in Calgary. It was an amazing, amazing weekend. We had people coming from Grand Prairie and from Saskatchewan and from Southern Alberta and from British Columbia all kind of gathering together. We had over 100 young adults uh, come to this conference, and we had saw 20 people get baptized at the conference, which was absolutely ama amazing. We did a baptism Friday night, and then we also did another baptism on, on Saturday. We weren't sure what to expect on Saturday. We had like another 10 people get baptized just on Saturday alone. And so it was an absolutely incredible weekend. People gave their lives to Jesus, and it was powerful. And so we're excited. Again, it's going to happen next year, and so we're going to invite you to be a part of it. Uh, it was great. And then from there, from Calgary, Beth and I, we headed to Penticton uh, to, to spend some time in Penticton, British Columbia. And uh, we, I actually had the opportunity. I spoke at church last Sunday on the 13th. I actually had the opportunity to speak at their church. We have a picture of this as well. Um, it's kind of maybe hard to see, uh, but that's me on the you're right, that's me. I was speaking on Sunday, and then the guy on the, your left, that's Pastor Ron Crooker. He's our pastor in Penticton. We were able to just spend some time with them, and, and it was an absolutely incredible, incredible experience uh, to be able to just meet them and share with them. You know, Ron Crooker and I, if you don't know him, you might not, he's like a father figure to me in my life. He's been family friends of ours for years and years and years, and so it was just great to reconnect. And then from there, um, from Penticton, we had to Chilliwack, kind of last minute. We weren't supposed to go to Chilliwack, and then on our way there, we're like, we should go. So we ended up going to Chilliwack. We ended up going there on uh, Sunday, and we stayed till Thursday. We just got back this past Thursday. I don't have any pictures, but we were there with uh, Pastor Matt and Charmaine Funk who are our pastors in Chilliwack, doing an absolutely incredible things uh, in Chilliwack. So we had a great time, not only just connecting as our family, but we're able to kind of connect outside of our family with the Victory family across Western Canada. And it was a powerful and an amazing time to just be away. So thank you for your prayers for us, even as we were getting some time of rest. Um, and I just want to say thank you to our team who made, uh, who were made it possible for us to go away, that everything was covered while we were away, that there was nothing that got missed. And so let's just give it up for our team that does it, worship and all of it. Also, we had uh, two great guest speakers come. Pastor Jonathan was here on the, on the, the 6th of August. And then we had Pastor Paul Just last week um, preaching. Um, and so we're just, I'm just so grateful to have people in my life and people that I can call on and learn from. You know, Pastor Jonathan and I, we went out for lunch a few, uh, a few months ago. It was amazing. And then Pastor Paul and I connect for a long time. But it was an amazing time. So again, thank you. We had a great time away. But today we're going to continue in our series, uh, Summer Highlights. And we're going to be going through another verse today. And I've loved this series. And I hope and pray that something that's been shared over the summer has spoke to you. Maybe it's about your favorite verse or somebody else's favorite verse. I pray um, that something kind of spoke to you. But today we're going to be going through uh, one verse in Psalm 91. If you know Psalm 91, it's an absolutely incredible, incredible chapter of Scripture, Psalm 91. Really just about um, refuge and about rest and finding shelter under the shadow of the Most High. And It's an amazing, amazing uh, chapter, and I would love to preach the whole thing. We had someone send in uh, Psalm 91, verse 1 to 8, and I was like, That's, I don't know if I can do that all in one day. And so we're going to, we just, and then someone else sent in one verse. So we're going to do Psalm 91, uh, verse 4. And this is what it says in Psalm 91 verse 4. It says this, he will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. And his faithful promises are your armor and protection. Now this verse, I, I know um, for a lot of us, this is really, not even just for us, but this is really something our world needs is, is to be under the covering and the shelter and the protection of God. 
to be under the shadow of his wings, to find our refuge and to find our rest. And this is something that I think speaks so powerfully to us. Why? Because it's something we really need. We need to have this place to go, a safe place to belong, a a place that we can find shelter from the storms and and we can find coverage and we can find protection. We all need it in a real way. And so I just wanna go through each one of those lines today and I pray that something will speak to you through it. And so the first one that I have, number one, is we're covered by him, right, under his wings. And when I think about being covered by something, it's kind of a short-term uh, solution to a problem. It's kind of short term, right? You know, you might find covering from the rain, so you might go f- find yourself and run into a bus stop, right? You might, you might be like, oh, can I go under your umbrella? We kind of have a covering from the storm. It doesn't necessarily fully protect us from the storm, but it actually covers us from some of the elements that can happen is what I see as a covering because Jesus or God, he's saying, I am the cover that you will find your refuge in that the storms of life are going to come. And if we've been on this earth for more than 10 minutes, we know that storms come. We know that not everything is gonna be rainbows and butterflies and sunshine all the time, even though sometimes that's what we want it to be. Most of the time, that's not actually the way that it is. We want everything to be perfect, but the reality is is that storms will come and rain will come and hail will come and wind will come. So the question is, where do we find cover from the storm? I think sometimes we find our covering with what we make by our salary. We find our covering by the things that we we can attain, but the reality is is that the covering that we need to search for, the only thing that will actually protect us from the elements is not what we can have. It's about who we can serve. It's about getting under his wings, getting under his protection, getting under his covering. So why? So that way we can face the storms and know that we're not going through them alone. We can find healing in the covering. We can find restoration in the covering. And Jesus found this covering. If you remember when he was tempted by the devil, after he got baptized, he said he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It's a tough place to be sent. That's where Jesus gets sent, to be tempted by the devil. And at the end of Matthew chapter four, uh, of the story, Matthew chapter four, verse 11, says this, then the devil went away and what came? And angels came and took care of Jesus. The angels came and took care of Jesus. They, they came and they were able to, to help him through it all. He was hungry. Right? He hadn't eaten in a long time. And, and he, he, he had just been tempted. I'm sure there's a lot of things going on. It says the angels came and took care of Jesus. See, we all need to be cared for when life brings challenges. Then I think one of the tragedies that happens in our culture is that when storms come, we find ourselves in isolation. When storms come, we find ourselves alone. We find ourselves trying to protect ourselves. We try and find our own covering when Jesus is saying, come to me and I'll give you rest. Come to me and I will be the one who will put you under my wings and I can protect you. I will cover you. I will make sure that no matter what goes on, you will know you're not alone and that I'm standing beside you. So you think cover, again, I don't think it's a long-term solution. I think when I look at this verse, if we go back to it, this verse, he will cover you with his feathers, he will shelter you with his wings and his faithful promises or your armor and protection. I almost see this as a space of spiritual, uh, being spiritually mature. Where we first, we find ourselves in a place where we need to go under his covering. You know, the place where we were so alone and we finally find Jesus. We're like, God, I want to see if, you know, you're for real. And we go into his covering. It's, it's kind of a short-term kind of process to lead us into the next place. I think we all have a story. A story that might be filled with pain and it might be filled with remorse. It might be filled with regret of the decisions and the choices we made. And we're sitting here like, God, like, like, like I need you. I need you. We all have a story. And I, and I. And my story is sometimes when I look back at all the decisions and all the things I made and the places I found myself, there's a lot of pain that can kind of well up. And for me, that's actually what drew me closer to Jesus. When I was going through it all, when things were really tough for me, when things were hard and I wasn't sure if I wanted to pursue Jesus or walk away, those are the decisions I was facing when I was 16, 17 years old. 
in high school, it's like, God, like, like, do I want to do this? Do I want to pursue you with my life? Do I want to give you my life? And there's a struggle that I had, but through all the pain and through all the trials, I found myself getting closer and closer and closer to Jesus under his covering. But the thing is, is that from the cover, I had to make my home with him. That it wasn't just a place I went on vacation. It wasn't just a place I went when I needed it. It's a place that I found myself and set up my camp and set up my tent. So that's the place I dwelt, was under his arms. I had to make it a place of solitude and rest. And I think when we go to the next part, is that we're strengthened by him. Under his wings, we're sheltered, sorry, sheltered by him. That's what we are. You know, shelter, when I I think of shelter, I think of a more long-term solution to what's going on. A place where we can actually find our home, where we can find our rest, where we set up, and that's where we live is under the shadow, under the protection of his wings. It's not just a place we go to when the storms come. It's a place we go to no matter what's going on. That even on the mountaintops, that's where we find our shelter. Even in the hardest moments, we find our shelter under his wings. I think we have to move from a place of covering to a place of shelter. That's where we actually live our lives. You know, this past holiday, Beth and I, we were blessed to stay in the homes of our friends. You know, when you go on holiday, you know, you might stay in a hotel, you might stay in an Airbnb, which might feel like a little bit more like home, but there's something beautiful about staying in somebody else's home and having home-cooked meals when you're on holiday. Like, I'm a big McDonald's fan, and, like, I love McDonald's, but, like, sometimes I kind of want some salad, you know? Like, sometimes I want to actually just sit around at a meal and have a meal with my, with my kids and with my friends and with their kids. We just sat around, we had meals, and we had conversations, and we reconnected, and there's something powerful about when we can find shelter, Not just a place that we can, you know, get rest from the storm. A place where we can actually go and we can actually live our lives. And we were so blessed to stay with people in fresh meals and a clean bed to sleep in. We were truly blessed. And I think that oftentimes this shelter, that God provides it. But I think oftentimes it comes through community. It comes through family. You know, when you hear stories, you hear of everything that's going on in Kelowna and in Maui and across Canada, all these fires going. And what's interesting is that when tragedy strikes, people start to open themselves up like never before. You know, people who would be scared to let a stranger into their home are saying, come, stay at my house. You know, we, had, we were staying in Penticton, right, an hour away, an hour and a bit away from Kelowna. That's where we were. And I'm seeing all my friends there. They're like, come, come to our house. We got a bed for you. The same bed I slept in. The same shower, they're opening it up to people who, who may have lost their homes. They don't know if their home's gonna be there. They gotta evacuate the city. There's something powerful when we come together in community and we become generous with what we have. I think shelter often comes through community. I think the beauty of the church is that we were created for a community. So what did God, he, he built the church. He created the church so that way we could find community. So that way we could find encouragement so we could find motivation so we could find help so we could find rest so we could find people to live our lives with I think that's the beauty of the church and we gather not just to worship which is amazing we don't we, we gather not just to hear a message which is great but we gather to grow close together like like church isn't just about you know the hour of worship and a message it's about what we do before it's about how we connect before it's about how we stick around after and drink a coffee together it's about how we can be there for each other i think the church for a lot of people has become the, their last resort rather than their first response it's like i've tried everything else let me try see if anyone at the church can help me it should be our first, like, like, we go to each other and say, hey, can you support me? And I think it takes a lot of humility to ask for help. It takes a lot of humility to let someone welcome you into their home when you don't have a place to stay. You know, we were on our way to Chilliwack, and we didn't have a place to stay, to be honest. Like, we were literally driving there. We're like, we don't know where we're going to stay. We're like... They had offered us the church. So we're like, we're sleeping in the church. That was like what we were going to do. I'm not joking you. Literally, we were 10 minutes away from the church where we were going to sleep. And all of a sudden, we get a phone call and a text being like, hey, we have two homes available for if you need them. So we ended up, like, it was amazing. We ended up staying in this home, literally on the side of the mountain, up the mountain, overlooking the Fraser Valley. 
And I remember sitting there at sun, the sun was setting, and I was like, how did this happen? Like, I was about to go sleep in the church, and I was going to be excited, right? Like, I wasn't going to complain, but like, all of a sudden, we're now on the side of a mountain. The people who are, who are the owners are like, yeah, we're camping, uh, like 20 minutes away, so the house is yours. Whatever you need, it's there. Stay in our house, whatever. It's going to be amazing. We're like, how did this happen? Again, it comes from us as a community being willing to share what we have and share and build the shelter, build the community, build the church together. And this is how the writer of Hebrews, how he explained the importance of the gathering. In Hebrews 10, 24, he says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. We can't stop meeting together. We can't stop gathering together. We can't stop worshiping together. We have to be together. Our shelter becomes a home. We encourage each other and we love each other and we're generous with each other. That's when a shelter becomes a home where we can actually live. Again, I don't think the real church happens in the one hour service. It happens before and after the service and happens through the week. That's why we always say stick around and have a coffee and let's get to know each other on a deep and real way. I think we're all looking for community. You know, that's even why the coffee we serve isn't from McDonald's. Now, I like McDonald's coffee. I'll stop there. But it's what we do is we get our coffee, we get it uh, brought in from Calgary because it's roasted um, and made by the survivors of sex trafficking happening in Calgary. You know, we want our community not just to be here, but we want to spread across the world. We, we want to reach people. And we might reach people not by having a conversation with them. It might literally be as simple as us buying coffee so that someone who's escaping sex trafficking can have a job. Like, like it's not about, like, like us, it's about how can we build this place. And that's why we have mission, our, mission, our missionaries in Cambodia. Why we do that is because we don't want to reach the world. And not all of us are going to have an opportunity to go to Cambodia. But how can we support what's going on there? We do that by being generous. That's why every month we give as a church to Cambodia. It comes out of what we do. We give to them every single month because we want to see God's kingdom built, not just here in Edmonton, but across the world. Community and the shelter is so important, and it's not just for us. You know, Beth and I, we love the church. Like, the church. We love the church. That's why we've dedicated our lives to building it. And one thing, if you've been in church long enough, you know that sometimes church isn't always easy. Sometimes there's challenges that come up. You know, we love to see people give their lives to Jesus. We love when we saw 20 people get baptized a couple weekends ago in Calgary. We love seeing people get set free. We love seeing marriages get restored. We love seeing people taking care of the sick and the poor. We love seeing people get healed. We love the church. And I want to tell you something. The truth is, Beth and I have been very hurt by the church as well. I think all of us maybe have a story of, of hurt. And I hear this so much, especially in our generation. So many people have been so hurt by the church. And what happens is they get this, the, the, this clouded vision of what Jesus is based on the actions of people. And you know what? As humans, we're all broken people. And we're going to do things and say things and do things that we regret. You know, Beth and I, we have some wounds when it comes to the church. I'm not talking about our church. I'm just talking about global, like the church. But rather than let them get infected, we found healing in them. Rather than letting them spread, and we found healing and we've learned to forgive. We have to be quick to forgive. We have to be quick to love. We have to love the church. Because we believe that the church is supposed to be a refuge. That the church is supposed to be a shelter for those who desperately need a home. And a home for those who might not even have one. You know, I've been in the church my whole life. And I was thinking about it today. I'm in my 10th year of full-time ministry in my life. 10 years of full-time ministry that I've, I've been in. Which shocks me. When I was in Penticton, I was talking to Ron Crooker, who's the pastor there. 
He's like, you were the unlikely one, is what he told me. He's like, your brother was annoying. You were quiet, and your sister was crazy. That's what he said. Like, I'm, he's just the way he talks. He's just so blunt. He's like, you were the unlikely one. But 10 years full-time ministry. And I was thinking about that. It's, it's because we desperately want to see people come to know Jesus. We want to see people get baptized. We want to see people find freedom. We want to see it. And that means sometimes we have to make more room in the shelter for other people and not try and hog it or take it off for ourselves. We have to share what we have. And you know what? I've been in church a long time. I'll be honest, I'm far from perfect. But that's what I love about the church. We aren't exclusive. We're, we're not VIP only. We aren't perfect people. We're imperfect people doing life together and trying to follow Jesus as best as we can and share his love and reflect his grace. And the thing is, I think when I read this, it's just, this all was coming to me this week, that once we find cover, then we find a home, and then the last part, I find this so interesting, is that it's all about the shield, and the, the last thing I want to share is that we're protected by him. You know, and a shield, if you know what a shield is, if you don't, read a book, you know, like, look at history. But a shield is used to protect. But it's interesting that you only need a shield when you're actually in battle, right? Like, you don't need, like, if you're not in battle, you don't need to have, hold your shield up because you can put it down because you're, you know, you're at home, you're, in, you're safe. So what, this, what I think about is when I see that he is going to protect us with the shield, that, that he is the armor, he's our shield, that means we actually have to go. That means we actually have to go into the world. We can't be protected if we don't carry the shield. But it talks about how this comes from the promises of God, faith in the promises of God, that, 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 that that's where this protection comes from. That's what this shield is. Again, it's a, the shield is what protects us in battle. We don't need a shield if we're not leaving the shelter. The step is the step that we take to start fighting for other people, to try and bring other people back. That's, that's the point is where we're supposed to go with the promises of God and bring them into the world. See, the Great Commission says go, but a lot of us, we read it and we think it says stay. It says go into all the world. Carry this love, carry this good news with us wherever we go to bring this protection, to bring this shelter, to bring this cover wherever we go because our world needs it. To bring his peace and to bring his joy and to bring the greatest news in human history to humanity. We think about the shield in Ephesians 6 verse 16. This is talking about the, 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 the armor of God. It says this, in addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil, of the enemy, of the evil one. See, the shield is that of faith in his promises. It's tough to find protection when you don't carry the shield. It's tough to find protection if you don't know what the promises are. If we don't know the promises, it's tough to find protection. And in the scripture, scholars say there's over 7,000 promises God has for us in the Bible. I think most of us, we'd struggle naming 10 or 20. And if you can name all 7,000, like, I'm so proud of you. 7,000 promises in scripture. Yet so many of us were so caught up in our fear, in our worry, in our anxiety that we see the promises but we don't believe them. We don't believe the promises God has for us. 7,000. I want to quickly share 10 of them this morning. 10. 7, we're going to do 7,000 promises this morning. I don't think I could talk that long. My voice would leave me. Number one is God promises to strengthen you. And Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 16 says this, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be, uh, grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Strengthen. 
Number two is God's promise is to give us rest. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy, heavy, uh, heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. He promises us rest. Number three, God's promise is to take care of all your needs. Philippians 4.19, Beth read it today. At the same time, uh, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. And number four, God promises to answer your prayers. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. We need to start praying our prayers as if we know he's actually listening. Number five, God promises to work everything out for your good. This is a verse we did a few weeks ago. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes for them. Number six, God promises to be with you. I will not fail you or abandon you. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It's a promise God has for you. He's always gonna be there. Number seven, this comes from Psalm 91. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. He will protect you. God promises freedom. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. What a promise, what a gift. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Number nine, God promises that nothing can separate us from him. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a promise. And the last one I want to share today is this. God promises you everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. You know, there's a guy, he played college football, played in the NFL, his name's Tim Tebow, maybe you've heard of Tim Tebow. He goes around and preaches and shares Jesus. When he was in college, he was playing in the national championship, and he'd always put verses on his eye block. Like, so the, you know the black marks they put, players put on their eyes? He put Bible verses on them. And in one of the games he played, he put John 3.16 in his eyes. And I don't remember the exact amount, but John 3.16 was Googled millions and millions and millions and millions of times during this football game. This guy who used his fame, who used his skill to really just share the gospel. That God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Millions of times people were Googling. What was that? Why did Tim Tebow have that on his eyes? You know, these promises, just these 10, these are some of them. There's more. I want to encourage you to read the Bible that's filled with promise after promise after promise what God says about us and what God wants for us and what he says will happen. You know, our faith is built by his promises that our protection comes from never forgetting and fully understanding. Because the enemy's gonna come. Right? He's prowling around like a lion looking for someone to devour. He's, he's doing, he's gumming. Do you know the promises God has for you? Do you know the truth about who you are? If you remember Adam and Eve, what happened? They believed the lie of the enemy because they didn't understand fully the promise and what they had. They didn't fully understand it all. And all three of these things promised the cover, the shelter, and the shield. They offer us refuge from the storms. They offer us rest from the chaos. They, they offer us restoration from guilt and shame. They offer us protection when we go into the world and the enemy's coming. That any of the, 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 the arrows that come, they're not going to get to us because we know the promises that God has. The shield of faith. A cover for the immediate. A shelter for the long term and a shield for the battle. Again, in my mind, this speaks of spiritual maturity. That as we go through from the covering to the shelter, to the shield. It's about us. We build a home 
and then we go try and bring as many people as we can with us. No matter what you're going through, there's always a place for you in his house. There's always a place for you in this house. And we're so glad that you're a part of our community. We're so glad, we're so grateful that you're a part of our family here at, at Known Victory Church. See, we start by seeking cover from the storm. Then we seek a place to call home and find rest for our souls. Then we seek a shield to protect us as we go to battle, as we go to war for our kids, as we go to prayer for our church. God covers us, he shelters us, he protects us, he shields us. That's who we serve, that's who he is. That's what he does. And he did it before, and I truly believe he'll do it again. See, God loves you and he cares about you deeply. And we can never forget that amazing fact and the beauty of that. You know, our takeaway today is simple. It says, I am covered, I am sheltered, and I am protected. We can't forget. Yeah, the storm's gonna come. Yeah, the rain's gonna come. Might turn into hail. The wind might come. But we gotta build our house on the, on the rock, on the firm foundation that is Jesus. He will take care of us. He'll protect us. He loves you. And he'll never leave you alone. That's what God does for us. So I'm just gonna pray for us today. God, I thank you that you are covering us. That when the storms come, God, that we can lean on you. We can go under the shadow of your wings and find refuge and find strength and find rest. I thank you that as we, as we go through life, God, I thank you that you bring us to shelter where we can build a home, where we can find community, where we can find family, where we can find motivation and encouragement to do the right things. And God, I thank you that, we, that you protect us, that as we go into the world, help us hold up the shield of faith strong. Help us go knowing that you are taking care of every one of our needs. And that we can go without fear, without anxiety, without worry, knowing that you are taking care of us in everything that we do, Father. And I pray that as we go out today, God, help us not be ashamed of the gospel, but help us be um, lovers of the gospel and share it wherever we go. And God, we thank you for Known Victory Church. We thank you that you are building your church and the gates of hell will not prevail. That you are building your church. And I thank you that you've asked us to partner with you in building your church here on earth. So God, help us not be dismayed, but help us be encouraged and excited about what you're about to break through in Canada with your gospel. And thank you that we get to be a part of it. So God, I pray that you, I pray you bless uh, everyone here today. God, I pray that you help them as they go through the week. I pray that you encourage them, strengthen them. And God, I pray that you help us become a unified community that loves each other and is generous with one another. In Jesus' name, amen.